Hey guys, Vincent back with another video for Tails Coffee and today I'm going to be talking about something a lot of people have asked me on my Instagram recently and that is what technique did I use before the single pour technique. So as you might have read in the title, it's actually to do with the cold bloom and it's actually a part one of two series. So today we'll be talking about the cold bloom part and then how it transitioned into this kind of frozen bean or with an ice cube kind of technique. So get ready for that next week, okay? If you guys are new here, my name is Vincent. I'm the head roaster for Tails Coffee and I'm a bit of an experimental person myself. So if you guys love weekly coffee content, make sure to subscribe and check out these new innovative techniques that I'm about to show everybody. And if you wanna see my favorite equipment and my favorite beans, check out my website, tailscoffee.com. So let's quickly talk about where the idea of a cold bloom actually came from. So back when I was starting coffee, it was like 2015 when I was brewing coffees. I'm about six months in now, guys, okay? So I've watched a lot of YouTube, I've read a lot of books, and everybody was saying to brew coffees at about 94 degrees. Now, keep in mind that the local roaster near me that I was buying my beans from, they tend to roast more towards the medium, maybe medium dark. It was like what they considered like a light Japanese roast. And that's because they were Taiwanese influenced themselves. Now, I was really enjoying the coffees back then because, you know, that was all I was really exposed to. But I thought that there was still quite a bit of bitterness in it. And actually back in 2008, 2009, when I was in Hong Kong, I had a really, really great cup of coffee that had very, very, very little like darker flavor profiles. And I might have thought that it was a bitter taste, but it was probably actually just a chocolatey note. So it was actually when I was drinking a hot lemon tea at a Hong Kong style cafe that I was reminded that when you pour hot water on lemons or honey, you create this bitter taste. And so I thought to myself, now, if they actually use cold water to protect it from being bitter, why can't I do the same with, with coffee? And that actually got me to think, let's try this. And that's where the cold bloom actually started. So after having this kind of like revelation or moment in my head, I decided to go back and bring this idea into my coffee shop. Now, what I did was I started practicing with this cold bloom and then pouring really hot water into it, which is the 94 degrees. But because the water, the cold water at the beginning actually protects the beans a little bit, you can actually technically use boiling hot water, 100 degrees, 98, 99, really, really hot water to finish off the brew. And I found that the coffees that were coming out were much sweeter than like a normal like 98 degree brew. And my theory behind it was when you brew with a really high water temperature, like a 96, 97, 98 on like a light to medium, even like, like especially like once you hit the mediums, it gets to have a scalding, bitter, kind of darker flavor that is potentially quite unpleasant. It leaves a nice, this dry aftertaste. And so by having the cold water, you remove all of that. And I'm gonna show you guys how I did it and how it becomes really good. So the recipe is gonna be a little bit different than our standard one. As always, we're gonna be using 20 grams of beans and 300 grams of water. But the beans, because we're having a blue, it's gonna be ground a little bit more coarse than usual. So we're gonna be going for a medium kind of grind size. And then for the water, because it's a cold bloom, we're gonna be doing 75 grams of cold water and then 225 grams of boiling hot water. So 98, 99 degrees, okay? So let's get right into it. Hi everyone, Eric back with another ad. And you're probably asking yourself, man, Eric is so good at making these ads. I wonder what his morning routine is. Well, you know, my morning routine, I like to wake up at 2 a.m because I'll have seven more hours before everyone else wakes up. And you're probably wondering, Eric, how do you have energy at 2 a.m.? Well, let me tell you, it's all because of Tails Coffee Early Bird Coffee. Just released, this brand new coffee will stimulate your senses, okay? It's gonna be like, as soon as you drink it, once you wake up, you're not tired anymore. You're gonna be seeing a text from a loved one or like whoever you have a crush on, whether it's Megan Fox, Taylor Swift, Ryan Gosling, whoever it is, okay? It's like receiving a text from them and it'll wake you right up. So check this out, all right? Early bird coffee. And don't forget my discount code from last week, Candice, for 15% off 
all your purchases. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. So we've got ourselves everything set up. Our grinds are in here. The shape is set. The filter is wet. And if you guys want to see, that's like my grind size. You can see it's a little bit coarser than what I normally use for the single pour. Now, over here, I've got myself the 75 grams of cold water. So we're gonna start off with that, okay? We're gonna start off with a cold water bloom. Just pour that down the middle. And you're gonna notice that the water just kinda sits on top. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a quick stir. And that's enough to just protect all the grinds. Now, it's at 20 seconds. The water is almost drained. We're gonna start pulling, pouring our water. Uh, keep in mind this is almost boiling. And as you can see that the lighter color, the crema doesn't really show up. It just kind of sits in between each of the grinds. We're gonna pour slowly, work our way out. And because this is a coarser grind, it will lift and sit a bit more, okay? We're gonna get all the way out to the edges. 300 grams. And we're gonna give it a stir. And we're gonna let that drain. So as you guys can see right now, because we use cold water to protect it, there's gonna be a longer or lower extraction, also because we have coarser grinds. So notice that the sides are gonna have a bit more. I could maybe pour a little bit slower to create more of a higher extraction and press even further. I would probably have to change my kettle though to do that. And it's okay to have a little bit on the side. That's just um, the nature of having like coarser grinds. You're gonna have all the coarser grinds on the side. So that does mean to me that we're gonna have a little bit thinner of a coffee, but let's see how it tastes. So final time we have it is two minutes and 12 seconds. You can see the grinds right over there. Uh, it's a little bit more coarser. And yeah, let's get to the other side and taste it. So we're back on this side and now first, right off the bat, I don't know if you guys noticed, but during the filming uh, or during the brew, I noticed that the color of the coffee was a little bit lighter and that is normally to do with the cold water bloom. Now, I actually just wanted to roughly go over what my thoughts on this was. So, how coffee and flavor extraction works is it's the instantaneous moment when hot water comes in contact with the coffee grinds. Now, in this case, we're gonna be using cold water, right? But what I think happens is when the liquid touches the coffee beans, it almost starts the extraction process. And once the extraction process starts, we're gonna have each particle of the coffee kind of just changed a little bit. And so I think that the cold water changes the shape or the particles of the coffee itself, and it doesn't quite let the hot water pull out all the best flavors. That being said though, I'm excited to try this coffee in front of you guys and tell you guys what I actually think about this coffee. So it is a little bit lighter in color, and this could also be you know, due to the fact that I use larger grind sizes, but Cheers, guys. So sweet. Actually, insanely sweet. And it might be because, you know, I am losing a larger grind size, but the sweetness is just very, very hard to find when I'm doing a single pour on a, with purely just hot water. This protection level allows it to have a lot more roundness and sweetness to it. There's a lot less of the darker flavors. Mind you that this technique is more for like, you know, your medium grind or your medium roast to like darker roast. So on light roast, it doesn't quite work the same, but for like a medium roast, guys, you have to try this out. Also on a side note, if you guys don't have like thermometers on your kettles and you guys just put it on a boiling stove, so you're always using like boiling water, try using some cold water first, protect your grinds. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, the cold bloom technique is something that has been very been interesting to me. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Have you tried it? Have you even thought about it? And if you do try it, please share with me what you think and what your results were. Does it turn off sweeter? How does it work with light roast? I don't think it works quite as well with lighter roast. This technique was made for the medium roast that I had worked with before, and it is super sweet, it is super round, super tasty. So 
Thanks again for watching and make sure to catch next week's video on how this technique evolved into something even better.